What's up, everybody? Back for another live Monday night beer review, baby. And tonight, I'm doing a bit of a comparison review, kind of, sort of, maybe, of two beers from the Great Divide Brewing Company, and they're out of Denver, Colorado. And I have their Yeti, baby. This is uh, their Yeti. This is a classic. Most of you know it. American Imperial Stout. But I also have their Chocolate Oak Aged Yeti. So, Regular Yeti here. This is a late 2018 can. This is a year-round beer, so there's not really vintages per se of this, but this was bottled or canned, canned. It was canned on uh, December 7th of 2018, putting this right around five months old. The chocolate OK Yeti, however, this is a 2012 vintage, and this is just over seven years old, has a bottled on date of March 28th of 2012. So the base beer, just a regular old American Imperial Stout comes in at 9.5% alcohol by volume, 75 IBUs, and the chocolate oak aged version. This is um, that beer, but then they age it on oak chips with cocoa nibs and spice added. And I believe the spice is cayenne pepper. Same I, um, same ABV, same IBU, 9.5 and 75. So let's check the comments here before I get into anything else going on. Um, we have Jake. Jake, Jake, how do you uh, say, is it Jace? Jake says me? I, I, I'd imagine that's what it is. He says, sup, Joe, what's up, Jake? And then Craig from Kent Beer Review says, yay, yay, son, what's up, Craig? So you were starting to trickle in. If this is the first time you have seen a live beer review, there is going to be a um, timestamps in the description box for those of you that watch it back on the replay. A lot of you do. So if you want to jump into the base review, the chocolate oak age review, or the Covey, or is it Covey? That's Covey. That's Covey. You can get right into it. If you're watching live, post comments. I constantly keep my eye on them. So if you want to talk about these beers, either one of them, both of them, different variants of this, just beer in general, post in the comment section. I will read them. We will have a great back and forth discussion. It will be fantastic. Also, Shout out to Raining on Your Parade because he always asks me what next uh, week's beer is going to be. I have not posted it yet, but it's going to be very similar to this week's. It's going to be two beers from Clown Shoes, and it's going to be their chocolate sombrero. I'm going to have another 2018 can of it, and I'm going to have the 2012 vintage. So I've had that beer numerous times, never had it aged, and I haven't had it since they canned it. So next week will be Clown Shoes, chocolate sombrero, the 2012 and a 2018 should be a lot of fun. So anyway... Check comments real quick, and then we will crack these open. We have Joe Gansel says, hi, bro. What's up, Joe? I think it's the first time I've seen you in a live review. What's up, buddy? Uh, Jake says, that's it. Just call me Jake, though. No, I, I will call you Jake. I just want to specify uh, how you say your actual name. Um, Paul says, hi, sexy. And we'll talk about Paul momentarily. Alex Dudek says, what's up, Joe? Hope everyone's Monday is going well. I hope your Monday is going well as uh, well, as well, as well, Alex. And uh Hopefully everybody else's is as well. Holy shit, how many times can I say as well? <laughs> Paul says, as a, a Sasquatch, I'd like to say I love this brew. I know you do. Um, I know you, you I, do you actually love this brew? I have a feeling it's a bit thin for you, Paul. He says, I'm sorry that the chocolate Yeti survived my woods. We will talk about that. Alex, the beer master, shows up and says, what's up, Joe? What's up, Alex? Uh, Chris says, uh, from off the tent, says, I, bud. Instead of hi, he just did I. Terrible. Uh, Jeff. AK no jinx. What's up, y'all? Jeff hit me with a porch bomb uh, last week of all kinds of great beers. Um, Paul says, I'm off tonight if you'd like to hang later. Yeah, I mean, I'm under the impression that Nick or Redbeard or somebody will start a chat after this, and uh, we will go over there. Uh, Chris says, you wearing a schmedium yet? Settle down, Chris. Got to drop some more weight before that schmedium happens, buddy. Just going to need you to settle down. Uh, Jake says, only thing I've had from Clown Shoes is their mango colch. I've had it. It was pretty solid for what it is, but not really anything crazy. And then Jeff says, he's drinking slice of pie by other half. Thanks, buddy, which is a nice segue into that was the other half beer that I posted today for review slice. Slice the pies. Uh, it was a cherry blueberry, basically pie sour IPA that was just pretty much a sour. Anyway, let's crack this one open. So actually, let me get into the little story here behind Chocolate Oak Age Eddie. So I picked this up in 2012. I actually picked up two of them. I drank one fresh. Uh, this was before I even knew about on tap, but I did have, I do have a uh, spreadsheet, you know, super nerd beer spreadsheet that I would keep my ratings in. I gave this one a 4.25 out of five back then, but I thought I would age one. Um, and then I brought this to Paul over at PA Brew News. I brought it to his house. I believe it was Labor Day of 2014, Labor Day weekend. I don't think it was actually Labor Day because we did it on Saturday. And uh, this was one of the beers we did not drink. 
So this beer has been hanging around for almost like four and a half years, say, and I just haven't drank. It's been sitting in the cellar and I just, I don't know, we're going to drink it tonight. It should be a lot of fun, but we're going to crack open the uh, base one. Now, Paul, I did put these in the fridge uh, a while ago. They've been on my fridge for like over an hour. So we're, we're room temperature at this point, probably like 60, 65. It's not boiling. I'm going to need you to settle down. Let's give it a pour. Man. So when I pour this beer, without question, the first thing that comes to mind is, A, I don't know how to pour beer, clearly. A little bit too hard of a pour there. We got a 37-finger head. But the other thing is that this pours out very akin to 1050 from Oscar Blues, just based on appearance. Super pitch black. The head on this one is so creamy looking, so luscious. And it's like a super dark brown. You can't even call this mocha. I don't know how it's going to come off on camera, but it absolutely looks absolutely fantastic. That, now, that looks like when you're talking about Imperial Style, I don't care if you say Russian, American, English, whatever. I want it to look like that. It looks fantastic. Uh, Eric Gilbert shows up, says, cheers, fools. In the boiler room, hopefully, I am not one of Nick's friends. Let's get a nose. Yeah. Yeah, that smells good. Now, Paul, you can correct me if I'm wrong or anybody watching this or watching this back. I feel like the Yeti, much like Oscar <clears throat> Blues 1050, when it's fresh, this has a distinct hop character. Like there's a distinct hop character here. It's not super big. It's not like a black IP, but there's definitely like this almost earthy, piney thing over top of this huge malt base, but I'm totally getting a hop character here. Yeah, a little bit of pine, a little bit of earthiness. But then underneath it, you can just run, you can just run through probably about 45 different tasting notes. Deep dark chocolate, big roasted malts, molasses, dark fruit, coffee, the whole nine. It's here. Whew. Yeah, as I keep on going back, this is definitely a little bit more hot for than I remember this. And again, this is not super fresh. This is five months old. So, you know, as it's, that's actually relatively fresh when you're probably talking about this beer in terms of um, when people drink it and whatnot, probably. Yeah, definitely piney, earthy. It honestly has slight black IP characteristics. Paul, what's the victory beer? I can't remind, uh, remember off the top of my head. Uh, the one that is basically a black IPA and they call it a stout that you and I, I believe reviewed on your channel way back when. Yeah. Jake says, that can looks familiar. I should have picked up a can before today. Most people get great divides. So yeah, you like with the clown shoes, if you can buy chalk sombrero and you want to you know, hang out in the comments and drink along, Jake, definitely pick one up. I think that beer is readily available wherever clown shoes gets uh, distribution. Storm King, Rainy Iron Parade and Paul says Storm King. Yes, yeah, so Storm King, this is very reminiscent of Storm King. This has, I think, way more nuanced flavors, bolder flavors, but this just reminds me of that, like kicked up a few notches actually. Yeah, this smells fucking. I just want to sit here and smell this. I'm sorry. Like I you guys probably want me to take a sip and whatnot, but I'm just I'm just enjoying the aroma. And I'm not a huge like black IPA guy, but this is giving me those vibes. And I don't know, I'm really digging it. All right, we'll get into it. So cheers, everybody. Let's see what the 2018, even though this is year round, this is a 2018 can of Yeti from Great Divide has offered. Cheers. God damn, is that a great body? And mouthfeel. Holy balls. Yeah. Yeah. Listen, the nose carries over. There is a distinct, like, slight pine resin, big earthy, just actually pungent hop character, this one. Certainly on the back of the palate, back of the throat. Wow, this is very resinous. But first off, the body and mouthfeel on this beer are it's fucking spectacular. This is, it's not full bodied. Okay, it's, it maybe is a bit thin for Paul, but I have to remind myself that this is 9.5%. It is not 10, 11, 12. It's not even 10, 50. This is like medium full body. But the this drinks like the best New England style IPs when people talk about soft and smooth and creamy and blah, 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 and tons of oats. This is like that body amplified, but in a stout. Yeah, this is super soft, super smooth, very creamy. The The mouthfeel is, dare I say, delicate. Yeah, I don't know why I just said that, but I did. As you can see, I'm actually taking down this can quite easily. The flavors, though, right up front, there's like this really roasty component throughout the entire palate. But there is like a bitter and coffee component to the beer. 
there's sweeter like baker's chocolate notes a little bit of dark fruit molasses this is not overly sweet this is actually way bitter than i way more bitter than i thought it was be actually i thought this was gonna be a big i like i forget how different this beer is and when you are talking about something like an american imperial stout it's clearly an american imperial stout because they do put a bunch of hops on it yeah but all those you know great stout flavors you expect from uh, expect from a big uh beer like this just with a backbone of nothing but like pure on resinous pine and earthy just hop character it's kind of crazy this is i wouldn't even say this is balanced at this point i i want to drink this like another six to seven months holy crap we got a bunch of comments i i said i was going to follow along and i have but i just mm. jesse from bumpy road says yummy what's up jesse craig says i love that base beer a simple well-made no fuss american stout yeah i'm you know what this is pretty damn good right now uh paul says it's absolutely hop forward fresh earthy dirty and charry sun yeah you know what I didn't even say charry, but now I'm getting that roast is turning into almost like a barrel char, more so than just straight charry, but it's like almost ashy to a certain extent. Um, Joe Gansel says, drinking Narrows uh, Brewing Company's Giant Octopus IPA out of Tacoma, Washington. Nice. How are you enjoying it, Joe? Um, Jake says that he actually picked up the mango cold shot on a vacation. Never seen it here in Erie. Wow. I thought like clown shoes pretty much got everywhere. I guess not. Paul says he's drinking a Waldo special 2019 from Lagunese. What are you thinking, Paul? Uh, Brandon over at Craft Beer Pour says, cheers, Joe. What's up, Brandon? Cheers, buddy. Thanks for showing up. Uh, Ray and Prey says, dude, you got to have a chill on the wall. Those listen, you can't expect Paul to drink anything like below 80 degrees. Not going to happen. Paul says, can you do, can you please do a battle beers between this and the Bolshevik bastard? I have like a 2015 Bolshevik bastard at some point. Maybe that would be fun. Uh, if I can get it fresh, if I can get a fresh Bolshevik, Bolshevik bastard when we go up to the share and grab this, Paul, maybe we do a battle beers on somebody's channel. You know, maybe we do that. We'll see. Uh, Chris says, drinking a sparkle puff, all delicious. I did review that last week. It should go up in another week or two, Chris. Um, I also enjoyed it. And mine didn't have the crazy sediment that a lot of people's had, but it was still pretty good. Uh, Jake says he's got a 3X IPA from Southern Tier. Hmm, not one that I've had yet. I've had the regular and the 2X, but I've not picked up 3X. I know Paul had it. I think, Paul, you enjoyed it. So anyway, yeah, this beer is... Um, I really do dig this one. I feel personally for me, the wheelhouse for this one would probably be one to two years. This is drinking right now fresh, like a straight up black IPA to my palate. There is so much, as Paul said, charry, like roasted malt character. There's a lot of earthiness. There's pine resin. It has all the stout qualities, all the imperial stout qualities you want in an imperial stout. But I think it's a little bit too hop forward for me currently at five uh, months old. I think I would sit on this for at least six months, if not a year, and revisit it. Maybe I will buy a can of this and do exactly that because I feel like I, I maybe I've never had it this fresh because this isn't like super fresh, but I, I don't remember this just being the big beast of a beer that I'm drinking right now. Joe says his uh, Giant Octopus IP from Narrow, uh, Narrow's Brewing Company is a really good mainstream IP, which is I'm starting to enjoy those more and more, Joe. Like I love New England style IPAs and whatever. But when I go back to like an old West Coast IPA or an East Coast IPA or just an older school IPA, I do appreciate them way more than I used to. Eric Gober says I'm drinking a dab. Dortmunder Export Sons. First person to drop Sons. Cheers. You know what? Good beer. Really digging it. I do believe I would like this with age on it. So rating on the just the regular Yeti, this is going to get like a 4.25 out of 5 right now. Um, I think with age on this, this is definitely in the four, five, four, seven, five rating. Um, that's what I think I remember I reviewed or uh, rated it back in the day. The last time I had this holy shit has to be at least three, four years ago. I, I don't think I have it on a tap, but I don't on tap every single beer I drink or I haven't, uh, until maybe like a year ago. But, uh, yeah, this, this beer, I remember it being, um, a little bit more in my wheelhouse, maybe not as fresh, but it's still a delicious beer. If you like, you know, hop forward, American I or American stouts, American Imperial stouts. This is probably your jam fresh. If not, I'd say hold off on it for a little bit and maybe drink it with a little bit of age on it. Let's cleanse the palate, read some comments, have a little bit of chat here. Uh, Jeff says, at Chris specifically, but this is for anybody, any of my Canadian beer tubing friends or Canadian viewers, um, has everybody, anybody had Flying Monkeys Invictus 2016? And Chris says he's never had it, Jeff. Uh, I believe Albino Rhino's had it, a couple other people. I think that was brought to the bottle share the night before the Albino Rhino or maybe the day after one of these years. So I know quite a few of the uh, friends have had it. 
Um, yeah, I mean, that's honestly, I feel as like uh, on tap goes or ratings go, Jeff, because Jeff says he just picked one up and the reviews are bonkers. I think that's like one of Flying Monkey's, you know, best beers. Also, you're never going to see the BNL probably ever again, Jeff, but I, you probably get uh, Chocolate Manifesto. That's another good one. Um, Jake says he checks in every single beer I drink, even if the, I've had the same one like five times in a row. And I pretty much check in most of the beers I've had nowadays, uh, just because I'm old and I kind of forget most of the time, but also just, you know, because I do, um, I never used to really do that up until maybe about, I don't know, maybe early, early 2018, like a year and a half ago, up until then I would just check in things that I wanted to check in for the most part. Um, Paul says, can there be a, sp a sparkle puff waiting for me in Canada? Paul, there's sparkle puff on the shelves here in Western New York. Now there's, it's five ninety nine a can, but it's certainly available here. You'll probably be able to find it a bit cheaper in Canada. Um, uh, Chris says he will grab Paul one. He says, thank you. Jake says it's good stuff. Easy drinking for a trip, but, uh, triple IP talking about the three X IPA from Southern tier. Eric Gilbert says Invictus was 30 and I tried it at Buster Rhinos. It wasn't worth 30. Well, to be fair, Eric, I think most people would agree that, uh, in general, not many beers are worth $30 a bottle. Just, just how it goes. Certainly not. A lot of people will easily pay that in the secondary market. You know, the people who go crazy for trades and everything. But when you're talking about a straight on, just off the shelf, $30 beer or brewery only or whatever, that shit's crazy expensive. Uh, Chris says it's four seventy five for Sparkle Buff. Yeah, in my review, I actually made that. I made mention that I said it's five ninety nine in Western New York, which translates into almost eight dollars a can Canadian. You guys probably wouldn't pay eight dollars a can for that, but I picked I picked it up for five ninety nine because I pay almost that for decadent beers, and honestly, decadent beers have been pretty disappointing lately. Uh, Chris says or Paul asked Chris if he wants a three X IP. I'll grab one for you. He says yes, please. Thanks. Well, you could just grab one over here, Paul. Get him some of that fucking Night Trail stuff or New Trail, whatever the fuck it is. All that New England. That's what he wants to drink. He doesn't want to drink 3X IPA from Southern Tier. It's a shelf turd. It's a good beer, apparently, you guys tell me. But, you know, I don't know. I don't want to talk about it. Anyway, so Chocolate OK Jetty. They have a spiel here on the side. It says, is another revered uh, incarnation of our legendary Imperial Stout. We toned down the hops a bit to allow cocoa nibs to contribute some pleasing bitterness while vanilla notes from the oak combined with the cocoa uh, create an aroma and flavor akin to a gourmet chocolate bar. Uh, a dash of cayenne pepper keeps things lively, adding just a bit of heat to the finish. Another great Yeti? Hell yes. So, yeah, I, I when I drank this fresh, it was pretty good. It was definitely chocolate forward. This is over seven years old. I'm going to guess, based on aging stuff and whatnot, not a lot of carbonation in this one, and also... Probably not going to be that great. I'm glad I drank this fresh, though, to have an idea and kind of, you know, it is seven years ago, so my memory isn't the best, but I do remember this being pretty chocolate for it. So let's crack this open. There's actually carbonation. I didn't pour the foil off because I should have, though, maybe. No, that's good. We're all right. I don't know how that's going to come off on camera, but the cap itself, a lot of bubbles and whatnot. I don't know how that's going to look, but a lot of bubbles. Throw that to the side. This damn flaky... I'm just going to take this off because I don't need flakes in my beer, if you know what I mean. All right, let's give this a big, non-hefty pour because there does look like there's pretty good carbonation. Let's see. Hey, that's not uncar- That has a lot of carbonation. That's fucking cool. Thank you. Seven years old, carbonation still spot on, boys and girls. That's what I'm talking about. Holy fuck, does that smell fucking crazy. Now, we have, uh, Chris says, the chocolate will be gone, my guess, could be wrong. Could be. And then Jesse says, chocolate cardboard. We'll see how much oxidation is in this one. Now, based on the look, that pours very akin to the base Yeti, but the head is more of a mocha color. This is not straight on dark brown. You know, alcohol legs, just like the, the base Yeti, definitely there. Man, this smells pretty good. I <laughs> oh, Yeah. This actually smells barrel-aged, not just oak-aged. Yeah, holy shit. There's tons, there's tons, tons of like sweet, bittersweet and sweet dark chocolate. There's, It's like a 40%, 50% cacao bar. It doesn't have quite the sweetness of like a Hershey special dark. It doesn't have the bittering component like a 70%, 80% cacao bar or just straight on Baker's chocolate has. There's sweet and savory notes to the chocolate itself unmistakable oak presence, definitely oak tannins, a little bit of vanilla. They say they put a dash of cayenne. I'm not really getting it on the nose. The base beer, that like charry, roasty, like black IPA character that I was getting in the base, totally gone. This is all about those malts, all about the, the oak chips and the adjuncts themselves. 
Yeah, this smells fucking delicious. This, again, this is over seven years old. This smells fucking exquisite. Jesse says, who makes Bring Out Your Dead? That is Bellwoods, Jesse. And anywhere that Shelton Brothers distributes, you will see it. Now, I guess, now I guess that if you're asking me that, maybe. Um, oh, Eric Gilbert. Okay, I was going to be like, oh, maybe you saw it on your shelves. Of course, Eric Gilbert says, I paid $25 for 2015 Bring Out Your Dead. That shit was like actual cognac worth it. That's not 30 bucks though. And you know what? I I could see paying 25 bucks for it, but you know, at the brewery, what is it? 15? That's a lot. Anyway, I want to get into this one because this this almost smells like a chocolate liqueur a little bit. Not maybe as sweet, but kind of in that realm. Anyway, let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. Yo, what? Yo, what? Yo, this is fucking amazing. I don't even, I always gonna thought I was gonna be super disappointed in this. I thought maybe it would be infected. Maybe it'd be like super tart. Maybe it'd be super cardboard and oxidized and undercarbonated and blah, blah, blah. And this is why, and this is why. When you age beers, you should more often than not, you know, drink the beer fresh, then age it, then come back and age another bottle just to remember, oh man, I'm getting the cayenne. Oh, this is a fucking, this is a mind fuck right now. Mind fuck. All right. Time out. I need to just compose myself because this is way better than I ever anticipated this beer would be. I'm going in for another sip. I'm just rambling. I don't fucking care. All right. So. Oh, this has so much fucking chocolate in it still to this day, seven years later, that it is hard to explain and comprehend how much fucking chocolate is in here. There is so much chocolate. There is sweeter chocolate. There's dark chocolate. This does not have any of the perceived cocos, or, you know, 40, 50, 60% cocoa and baker chocolate. This is, this is sweeter dark chocolate into milk chocolate. There's a decent amount of oak tannins on the palate. There's a, there's a hint of vanilla. And on the finish, there is a touch of oak tannins mixing in with a cayenne pepper, with a cayenne pepper. And it's not distracting. It's actually a bit pleasing and kind of deviates from the rest of the beer, which is pretty much full on sweet. The base beer is still there, but it's just there to like prop up the oak chips and the chocolate and everything else. So you're getting you know, a little bit of coffee roast, a little bit of like just general roasted malts little bit of dark fruits. I'm actually getting a little bit of like a, a sweeter dark cherry. This is fucking great. The body and the mouthfeel, here's where it only loses a little bit of points for me. But when you age a beer like this and you're putting adjuncts and stuff in it, it has a tendency to thin out a lot of times. Of course, they're using oak chips. They're not actually throwing it into a barrel. But the body on this one is like lower side of full body, almost approaching medium, which the base is. But the mouthfeel is just as good. And dare I say it's like velvety smooth as opposed to just creamy like the other one. It's velvety smooth and creamy. But the body is not as big as the base. Regardless, I don't fucking care because this is amazing. I'm singing. Uh, no one wants me to. Let me read the uh, comments here because I have just I kind of just got lost in a world of awesomeness. Uh, Joe Ganzel says, love me some aged beers. Me too. Paul says it's going to be awesome, and Paul hit the nail on the head. Chris says, physics it. I don't have a physics machine, Chris. For fuck's sakes, you know this. I should buy one, though. I think it would be interesting. Um, Eric Gilbert says, Covey, we're going to be doing a Covey. I don't almost want to because I feel like I'm going to be wasting this beer. Uh, Bumpy did ask who brings uh, or brews Bring Out Your Dead or who makes it. It is Bellwoods. They are Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Paul says, just reviewed Tundra Wookiee from Midnight Sun. Ooh, how was that, Paul? I can't wait to see that review. Uh, Eric Gilbert confirms Bellwoods for Bring Out Your Dead. Todd says, yo, 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 what's up, sons? What's up, Todd? Nothing, just drinking some amazing beer. Um, Dad Incredible shows up, says, cheers. Uh, great beer. Yeah, for sure. What's up, Dad Incredible? I saw your uh, your midnight snack the other night, man. That looked delicious with the pulled pork nachos. Or I believe it was pulled pork, wasn't it? Or carnitas or something. I don't know. Fucking look delicious. I'm fat. I like all food, too. Uh, Earth says he loves all Yetis. I have liked every single one I've had, although I haven't had some of the newer incarnations like the cherry chocolate. I know they're coming out with, a, is it a chai vanilla one too? Chris says 4.75 out of five. We'll see. 
Um, everybody is exchanging some pleasantries. Eric Gilbert says it was aged for two years. Come on, son, talking about, I believe, the um, Bellwoods, maybe? I don't know. About the Bud Bringer, that probably. Todd says, Yetis are great. Haven't had one for a while. Uh, then that's on you, Todd. You need to go pick one up and maybe some of their uh, variants. Um, Nick says 4.75 out of 5. Perfect score, except for it isn't a 3.75, probably, Nick. Uh, Drunken One says, hey, gang, what's up, Drunken One? Chris says, 93, garbage. Rain I prayed says, Joe can't even talk, and that is an issue. When I can't talk, things are problematic. Um, Jesse says, hey, gang leader. Todd saying nice. Cheers to all the Canadians and Merkin, says Eric Gilbert. Chris says, way too many viewers going to have to piggyback this type of live streaming. Yeah, I don't know why people watch, but uh, I appreciate them watching. And then Paul says, I knew it was going to be great. Dead incredible. The big thumbs up. Yeah, this is – so this is all I can say about this beer. Does anybody know out there if they rebrewed this one in the last two or three years? Because if so, and anybody sees this fucking beer on the shelves, pick one up, maybe pick a couple up, age one for sure, drink one fresh. This is fucking dynamite. Yeah, I would say flavor-wise, enjoyment level-wise, probably a five out of five. But I can't give it a five out of five because the body isn't quite there. And even though the base beer, base beer is there a bit, it gets lost just, just a touch because of the oak and the chocolate and the cayenne and all that stuff. 4.75 out of five all day. Every day, Chris, you win. What do you win? Absolutely nothing. Um, yeah, holy shit. I don't think they ever mentioned the actual... Um, Place to get the cocoa nibs from or anywhere. Oh, suggested food pairings, baby. We'll go with some raw oysters, baby. Some grilled New York strip, maybe some chicken and mole, baby. Some roaring forties blue cheese, maybe a little bit of gorgonzola, maybe a little creme brulee or chocolate raspberry mousse cake, baby. I'm not drinking this with any of that shit because I'm just taking this to the head as we speak. Jake says, I've never tried aging beer before, but after today, I might have to give it a shot. Yeah, the thing, the one downside to aging beer, Jake, is that, A, you have to make sure that you keep it in a climate that, you know, a lot of people go crazy about, like, the perfect aging setup. Oh, make sure it's 40 to 45 or, you know, not above 50. Just make sure it's at a consistent temperature, probably under 70 degrees. You don't want fluctuations. You don't want to put this in the fridge, take it out of the fridge, put it back in the fridge, take it out of the fridge. You don't want the area that you have it in to, you know, go from 50 to 80 degrees, depending on the season. You just want the temperature to be, you know, within probably five degrees of one another from season to season. I have aged a lot of beers. I've drank a lot of aged beers. And honestly, outside of the barrel-aged Bigfoot that I drank like two months ago doing a live review, I can't think of too many aged beers that I have drank that were just absolute shit. That one was the lone exception. It was pretty much cardboard. It was flat as could be. All the, all the characters just kind of faded. This one is actually, you know, a year and a half older than that beer, right around there. And this beer is magical. And they pretty much had the same, you know, aging process, almost the exact same. <laughs> Chris says, mm, great, now I'm hungry for fuck's sakes. Yeah, me too. Todd says, Gaganzola, LOL, you beat me too. Baby, you got to get some smoked Gouda. Paul says, I forgot the smoked Gouda, baby. You got to go and have them dust their rolls and Craig, uh, Greg's beer review, baby, dust the rolls on the stand. Raj, say, Raj J says, what up? Just in time for some dust and roll. Yeah, baby. Oh, with the dust and roll with time. Drunken, <laughs> Drunken one says, LOL. Hey, Rod. Jesse says, it's something explosion. Listen, emojis, I'm the worst at them, Jesse. You got to stop, buddy. I don't know. You're going to make me go crazy. Todd says, I bet Rod has picked this one up for a buck 99, LOL. <laughs> Probably. Probably free though. Let's be honest, Todd. Rajay says, "Don't hate, always, always the game and never the player." Yeah, shout out to Booker T. Um, Chris says, "Who's bringing the pungent cheeses for the share, baby? Somebody needs to get some stinky yeah, blue tea, the gargantola, maybe some more gouda, baby, some pan, baby." Uh, Maxwell Star says, "Go good with some more, some more of your pungent cheese, the daddy like your gargantola." I just like saying gargantolas in this voice. I'm sorry. Uh, Todd says, "True that." Uh, and then Chris says, mind blown emoji. Oh, shit. See? Yeah, no, it's, yeah, that's a mind and it's blown. I got it. Mind blown. Paul says, Joe will be on a drunk point for the hangout later. Uh, yeah, here's the thing. When you lose almost 50 pounds and you can't, to begin with, my tolerance for alcohol was, how do you say, terrible. 
I cannot hold my liquor well. So when you lose 50 pounds, you can, you know, you can bet your bottom dollar. I'm going to be a worse drunk as I just like, I'm, I probably drank like eight ounces of these and I'm already starting to feel good. Uh, yeah. So do we do a cuvee? No, no, we don't do a cuvee. We do the cuvee fucking cuvee time, boys and girls. Um, you know, I'm pour a little bit into here just to kind of get it even. Is that about right? I don't know. Let's see. How's that looking? Oh, yeah. We're going to actually, you know, I don't know which one to, you know, fuck. We're pouring into the uh, new one. Here we go. Covey time. I'm not wasting any of this at all. It's Covey time. Can't, I'm, I'm going to fucking lick out the glass if I can. Possibility. Um, the hair over here. What the? <laughs> All right, so we got the Covey. The Covey is looking more like the base beer than the actual chocolate one because that head is more of like a straight up dark brown as opposed to mocha. Oh, she got to cleanse this palate. Fucking, fucking amateur over here. I do how many Coveys? Got to make sure this thing is pristine. You got to give the Covey the respect it deserves at all times. Rod says, uh, y'all better hit that like button for my boy Joe. Are we sending out Eric Lines fan to break your decaps? Oh, shit. Yo, I can't co-sign this. I'm not into violence. I am into hitting the like button on everybody's videos that I watch. All right, so again, um, yeah, it looks like a, uh, it looks, you know what? Fuck the looks, honestly, because it looks amazing. It looks like both of these beers, the head is more reminiscent of the, um, the base one. And yeah, who cares? Smell. Not getting a whole lot, honestly. This is kind of disappointing. <clears throat> Roz124 says, Big Greg reviewed a few, a few of older Yetis recently, said they were good, but on the bitter side. Yo, I don't know if it, I don't know which ones they were, but this chocolate oak age one is like the regular Yeti, definitely bitter, definitely hot forward, not sweet and like, you know, you know, decadent and whatnot. This one, more to the sweet side. So I will say this. If you're going to want something that's probably more to the sweet side, probably get the variants of the Yeti. The base Yeti needs a couple years before it probably, you know, drives out the bitterness and the hop character. Yeah, this actually has more of the chocolate, a little bit of vanilla and oak. I would say it's taking on more characters from the chocolate oak aged and less from the base. It actually has kind of drawn out those, those hop forward black IPA characters I was getting in the base. So let's get into it. Cheers, everybody. I'll say this right up front. I still want to drink this by itself. And I'm going to drink the rest of this by itself. However, this has actually... Man, this is nice. Oh, let me let me go back. Mm. So you're, you're getting the base Yeti characteristics. I'm still getting a hop character. A little bit of resinous pine little bit of earthiness, a little bit of char. But over top of it comes that chocolate, and now it's a balance between the sweeter dark chocolate and the baker's chocolate. Still getting the vanilla, still getting the oak tannins. The cayenne is still there. This is definitely better than the base at five months, but not as good as the seven-year-old chocolate oak age yeti. Rating on this, if I gave the base a 425 and I gave this a 475, you would imagine that this would just land right in the middle at 4.5, right? Wrong. I'm going to give this a 4.4. Why? I have no idea. I just decided I'm going to give it a 4.4 because ratings don't matter for the most part, for us, for me. It doesn't matter. You guys know a 4.4 out of 5 is a pretty fucking good score, whether if it's a 4.5 or 4.5 or 4.35 or 4.7. Fucking anywhere in the mid fours is pretty pretty high score. But yeah, the body, mouthfeel, the same as both of these. Lower to medium side of full body, creamy, soft, smooth, velvety uh, mouthfeel, a lot of chocolate, a lot of roasted characteristics underneath it. But at the end of the day, this is fucking delicious. The base beer is pretty damn tasty. This beer is fucking amazing. And uh, yeah, this was so much fun to do. Holy shit. I did not think this was going to go out. I, I, honestly, this was, this was my expectations. Like I said, I don't have expectations going into these reviews. 
I thought I'd really like the Yeti. I thought I would like the Yeti more than I did. I thought that would be like, I remember just loving the Yeti and thinking it was just an amazing Imperial Stout. Don't get me wrong. It's a damn tasty one. I do think I like it aged. I thought this was going to be a fucking train wreck beyond belief. I thought it was going to be terrible. And this is like one of the best aged beers I have drank in a long time. Fucking delicious. Go to uh, comments here. Uh, uh, Jake says, no cuvee. He doesn't want me to cuvee it. I don't uh, uh, <laughs> Nick says, I don't give a fuck. Kobe? Yeah, it's Kuvi. Chris calls a 4.5 out of 5 for the Kuvi. 4.4. He was close. Joe Ganzel laughs at uh, something I probably did, or maybe somebody else pointed out in the live chat. Uh, Nick says, cleanse that palate, sons, which I did. Bumpy Road says 4.6 equals high 4.5. That is how my math works, but it's probably not how math works in general. Paul says, don't worry. I just did a 13% Wookiee, and I have a sixer of Waldo in me by 10 p.m. Yo, you're a fucking animal, Paul. That's unbelievable. Jake says, do you cuvee every week? Do I cuvee every week? No, only cuvee when I do side-by-sides for the most part, which probably a couple times a month. And show says one pride. Um, Chris says, Joe's drunk and we love it. Now, I'm not drunk yet, momentarily. Like, let me finish, like, the other half of this, and then I'll be fucking shit-faced. Uh, Backwoods Billy Craft Beer Review says, cheers, guys. Cheers, Billy. What's up, man? Uh, Jesse says hi to Billy as well. Uh, Chris says, if you haven't subbed, do so. Share if you have to. Uh, are you talking about my my channel? Like, don't, don't ever do that. I appreciate it, Chris, but don't, do not do that. Eric Gilbert says, keep practicing. You will become a professional drinker. Never. Never. Eric Gilbert says, way better. Jesse says, can I have your email off the time so I can share this video with you? <laughs> yeah, share it amongst yourselves. Just, you know, fucking email it and, you know, text it back and forth to one another. Chris says, for fuck's sake, should have been a 4.5. I want to win again. You don't win anything, Chris. That's the problem. I mean, you think you win, but you don't. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, because you is drunk. I am not drunk. Give it time, though. Uh, Jake says, I consider anything above a three a good beer. Anything above four is great. Yeah, I mean, I if my for me, anything under a 3.5 is I wouldn't drink it again. I definitely wouldn't buy it again, but I wouldn't probably never drink it again. 4.3, 4.75, I'd definitely drink it again, probably never buy it again. Four and above, I'm drinking, I'm buying. Once you get into like the 4.5 and above, those are like world-class amazing beers for me. It all depends. Like the difference between a 4.5 and 5 is negligible most of the time, but there's something usually keeping it from a 5 or a higher rating, a body, a mouthfeel, maybe something, drinkability, maybe it's a little bit too sweet. I mean, there's a lot of beers I've rated on my channel that are given straight 4.5 out of 5s to on flavor alone, but some of them are too sweet where like a 12 ounce bottle is too much for me. So that like on taste alone, it'd probably be a five, but I have to cut a half point out because I couldn't probably finish the entire bottle. Or if I do, I'm going to hate like the last four ounces of it. Uh, Jake says preconceived notions with a little wink. Yeah, I don't try to have any pre preconceived notions. Um, Earth says might have to drink my last Yeti tonight, which is fine because I can get six packs on deck. Yeah, what did you pay, what do you pay out there, Earth, for six packs of Yeti? This was two fifty three bucks, maybe two bucks. I don't remember at this point. I don't. I have no idea what I paid for that. I think that might have been in a mixed sixer. Uh, Nick says PA Yeti news. <laughs> Chris says where's average pops this evening? Uh, he's working, Chris. You know he's working. He works the second shifts. Um. Paul says, what the fuck? 750s are nothing. The more, the better. Yeah, no, I can't disagree. Uh, yeah, I don't have much more to say about it. So to recap, Yeti, this is a classic. Most of you have had it out there. If not, most of you have heard about this one. If you've never had it, give it a go. Just be prepared to drink that one like a big American Imperial Stout, a.k.a. it has hop characteristics to it. If I did that blind, I would totally call that a black IPA without question. If you see any chocolate Oak Age Yeti, regardless of the year, I will say this. If you were to happen upon a 2012 bottle, make sure the place you you buy it from or the person you buy it from took care of it. I don't think I want to drink this if this has been through 75 different temperature changes and you know kept out in the, in the sun all summer long for multiple summers. But if you were to see this in a reputable place by the 2012, I don't know the last time they released this. I don't think this was a one-off. I feel like maybe 2016, 17, I remember seeing this come back again. But if you see this one and you like Yeti, most of you seemingly do, grab this one because this is this is a fucking great variant. It's all the chocolate. You get a bit of the cayenne. It's fucking great beer. Uh, 
Uh, Nick says, I wish I could buy an Imperial Stout for two something uh, a can. Um, I mean, yeah, I New Brunswick sucks. I don't know what to tell you, Nick. What are you gonna do? You can't you don't hate the player, hate the game. That's what Rod said, right? Uh Earth says, depending on a place, 12 to 14. Jake says 250 for a 9.5%. Sounds like a really good deal. Yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Most of a great device. I want to say I paid for this 22 ounce bomber. I think I paid like eight or nine bucks when this was released back then, which you know, I think bombers are a ripoff, but for everything that's in there, fucking good. What I'm drinking right now, 4.75 out of five beer, nine dollars all day, earring day for this beer, without question. Uh, Billy says, Yeti beer, did you get that free with your Yeti cooler? I did not, Billy. I did not buy a Yeti cooler. I just ended up picking that up. That's hilarious. I do want some, uh, I do want some Yeti um, swag though, like from them. They, they they actually had a Yeti glass, like a snifter. That would be fucking cool. If I do happen upon one of those, Paul, I will get you the Yeti glass from Great Divide because I feel like you should only review and Yeti Yeti glasses at all times. Uh, Backwood says black IPA. Yeah, that's basic. Honestly, if I was doing this blind, this Yeti base Yeti would really fool me for a black IPA. That's how hot forward it was. Rod says, wow. Let's see. My Yeti was on as a stout for me. See, my Yeti was as a stout for me. Yeah, I don't know. It's super hot forward for me. Uh, Eric says the Yeti was all right. Maybe better from a can. Yeah. If you, if you didn't like Yeti from a bottle, I doubt it, Eric. Rod says, do something I can too much. LOL. Not Rod J approve. You motherfucker. Ring <laughs> Aaron Freight says, Rod, Mr. Showoff. Yeah, I agree. Um, Paul says, it's true, Joe. It's true. Thank you. No, for sure. You deserve the Yeti uh, glassware at all times. All times. So um, Eric Gilbert says, it's $11 a bottle for Yeti Ontario. That's probably the going rate for a regular Yeti bomber. Seven, eight bucks American. 11 translate to like what? 850? Eight bucks American? That's, yeah. You're getting an imported, you have to remember. So anyway, base Yeti, 4.25. Chocolate oak aged, 4.75. A call rate, 4.4 out of 5. Uh, this was a lot of fun. I had at one point, I believe, 19 people watching, which I appreciate each and every one of you for stopping by because that's awesome. Next week, clown shoes, clown shoes. We're going to do clown shoes. We're going to do chocolate sombrero. The I have a 2018. It's pretty much identical to this one. I have a 2018 can of their chocolate sombrero. And then I have a 2012 bomber of chocolate sombrero. Going to do those both side by side comparison, much like this review. And I'm hoping that the age version ages well. There's so many fucking adjuncts in that beer. I don't know. It's probably going to be a mess, but I haven't had it fresh or aged in probably three or four years. I never had it in a can. So we're going to find out what's going on. Uh, we do have to get to some shout outs here. So I'm going to go in order of how I can read them. Shout out to Jake for commenting. Shout out to Craig over at Kent Beer Reviews. Check out his channel. Good do. Shout out to Joe Ganzel for showing up. I think this is the first live stream he's here. Shout out to Paul over at PA Brew News, baby, for showing up. Great channel. Check him out. Shout out to Alex Dudick for showing up as well. Also, Alex the Beer Master. Chris over at Off the Ten. Check out his content. He posts uh, pretty regularly as well, and uh, he's my friend. Damn it. Uh, shout out to Jeff, AK No Jinx, for hooking me up with all the amazing beers and showing up as well. Uh, shout out to Eric Gilbert for being the troll that uh, fuels the fire in me to continue to do these beer reviews. Without Eric Gilbert, I'd be a broken man. Shout out to Jesse over at Bumpy Road Brewery. Great dude. Good content. Check out his channel as well. Shout out to Raining Iron Parade for always asking me what next week's beer is, even if he doesn't show up for the review. Just how it goes. Shout out to Brandon over Craft Beer Pours. Pretty huge channel. Good dude. Uh, he likes to review all the uh, New England beers as well, kind of like Jesse. Uh, who else am I missing? Shout out to Backwoods Craft Billy uh, for showing up. Uh, let me get the entire name of his channel because it is a lot. Backwoods Billy Craft Beer Reviews especially. He does a lot of different stuff as well on his channel. Uh, shout out to Rod over Rod J Beer Ventures because if I don't, he will never let me hear the end of it. Shout out to Todd for showing up as well and supporting uh, my live stream. Shout out to Nick over at Maxwell Star Beer Reviews. Nick, are we going to go over to your show? Are you going to piggyback off my viewer base for your live show? Because if so, I'm totally game. Let me know. Uh, shout out to uh, Dad Incredible Barbecue Grilling and More. He always uh, comments on my videos and uh, he also makes some great barbecue food. So awesome. Shout out to Earth. He's the fucking planet. I cannot make that joke enough, or maybe I can make it too much, but shout out to him because he's an awesome dude. Shout out to Drunken One, another guy with a channel, a lot of homebrew stuff, a lot of garden stuff. He likes to tease people that it's you know 80 degrees out when it's 30 at, you know, snowing in their area. No big deal. It just happens. I'm just kidding, Drunken One. Uh, shout out to Raz124 for showing up, commenting, telling me about Greg's uh, reviews about Yeti, where he didn't like them. Apparently, I like them more than he does. 
And uh, holy shit. Holy shit. Are these, <laughs> I think the shout outs are done, boys. So we'll do one last read of comments here and go. Uh, Backwoods Billy says, Clown Shoes Billionaire. Awesome. Yeah, I've had, I actually have their Pierre Ferran beer billionaire, but I've had one of them. It was good. Joe Gans says, Cheers, everyone. Rajay Beer Adventure says, Clown Shoes. Nice. Uh, Jesse cheers everyone. He says ABM had a beer last night. Eric Gilbert says maybe it was Dragon's Milk that was 11 bucks. Pretty much the same beer. If you're comparing Dragon's Milk to Base Yeti, your palate's shot because one is barrel aged and one's not Eric Gilbert. Holy shit, did you have too much whiskey? Eric Gilbert says Life of a Troll Sons. Dragon One says thanks for the show, uh, sir. Thank you for showing up, Dragon One. I do appreciate it. Uh, Chris says thanks, Dad Incredible, for subbing. Dad Incredible's a good dude. Uh, Nick says sure, Joe. He's going to help. So everybody who's watching, you want to go over to Maxwell Star. That's the name of his channel, Maxwell Star, Maxwell Star Beer Reviews, I believe. Did you change it to just Maxwell Star at some point, Nick? Or is it actually still Maxwell Star Beer Reviews? No, it's just so it's Maxwell Star. He actually got rid of the beer reviews. It's just Maxwell Star. Go sub over to him. We will be chatting afterwards. Chris says, Earth should join and after chat, Earth is always welcome. Again, he's the entire planet. Fuck my, I just, I got to stop making that joke. It's a terrible joke. Hashtag dad jokes, hashtag sad jokes. Uh, Joe Ganzel says, I got dragon's milk. I haven't tried. What is your opinion of it, Eric Gilbert? Joe Ganzel, don't listen to Eric Gilbert. He doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. Listen, dragon's milk is one of the best bang for bucks, bang for buck barrel aged imperial stouts you can get basically in the U.S. It's a shelf turd. Uh, you want me to tell you a story? Story time, folks. Yes, I'm hammered. Here we go. Story time. Dragon's milk this past week was in the mix of six section at my local Wegmans for $10.99 six pack. They had four bottles. Did I buy them all? No. I wanted to share the love. I bought a single bottle. But here's the thing. A buck 83 for a fucking bottle of that, 11% barrel aged imperial stout. That's pretty damn delicious. Yeah. That's the type of beer that you find and you're just like, I'm going to buy them all, but I have a big heart that doesn't work properly. Got to spread the love. Um, Eric Gilbert says it's solid at Joe Ganzel, LOL. Uh, Chris says, good job, Joe. Great reviews tonight. Earth says, I might be able to be on tonight for a bit. Fucking right, Earth. And then Billy says, cheers, buddy. Thanks for the shout. No problem, Billy. Have a good one, buddy. And then uh, Nick says, I dropped the beer review from the name a year ago or so. Thanks, Joe. Fucking do I watch your channel? I do. I didn't actually notice it, which is ter terrible. It says, took you long enough to notice. Yeah. And then Chris says, I should have picked up a Dragon's Milk. Walk past it. Yeah. No, that's on you. Uh, Eric Gilbert says, America beer is all the same. Meat tastes like MTG. And this is where Eric Gilbert gets blocked. Of course, he doesn't because I'm not going to block anybody, but uh, that's pretty hilarious. Uh, Paul says, I'm Auburn in Auburn Hills, Michigan. They use Dragon's Milk as doorstoppers. Yeah. Uh, Ray Braid says, all, your, all four Dragon's Milk would have been mine. No, I know. That's the thing. I have so much beer to drink. I bought one because I'm like, spread the love. Someone else is going to show up here and be like, holy shit, Dragon's Milk and a mix of six section for $10.99. Fucking go time. So uh, Paul said, $1.99 bombers. What the fuck? In, in Michigan, 199 bombers? God damn. Um, yeah, it's MGD. I, did he say MDG for for real? Yeah, he fucking totally said MDG. Yeah, Miller Denuine Graft. Jesus Christ. Anyway, I'm going to shut this down. We're going over Maxwell Stars' channel. No longer beer reviews. We're going to hang out. It's going to be a lot of inappropriate comments because Paul can't behave himself and Greg's a piece of shit. Either way... It's going to be a lot of fun. So I appreciate each and every one of you for stopping by for another live review next week. Chocolate sombrero from Clown Shoes. If you can pick it up, you get Clown Shoes in your area. Grab one, drink along with me. We should have a good time. Um, I'm probably going to have just as good time as today. Not on the quality, just on the alcohol percentage because I'm fucking feeling good. Cheers, everybody. Have a good one.